Hey friends, I hope you're having a good time. I've noticed some friends working hard to learn English, but it's not clicking for them. No worries though. Today, I've got a special trick just for you. It's like a secret weapon to boost your English speaking and reading skills. So tune in and pay close attention. No skipping the video, okay? So, first of all, questions arise. Why you must read beginner level? Why do I need to read in English? My students often ask this. They think I go to classes, do my homework, and watch films in English. Why should I read books? Actually, reading is the best way to improve your English, and I will tell you why this is important. First, reading is extremely important. Right now, in 2023, only one out of every 100 people attended university. Now, seven out of 100 people attend university. All jobs require more reading and writing than 100 years ago. This holds true for everyone. It makes no difference whether you work in an office or as a mechanic. Next up, let's talk about how awesome reading is for your language skills. Reading isn't just any old activity. It's like a superhero for your speaking, writing, vocabulary, and grammar. It won't magically upgrade your listening skills, but here's the cool part. It turbocharges your vocabulary. And guess what? A top-notch vocabulary makes listening a piece of cake, which in turn supercharges your listening skills. Now, remember those days in school or at your learning spot where you had to read those yawn-worthy textbooks and stories with mind-numbing exercises? Well, forget about that. We're diving into the fun side of reading, the kind where you pick up a book not because you have to, but because you genuinely want to. It's like choosing the coolest adventure over the same old routine. Ready for the reading thrill? Let's do this. That means reading a book you enjoy because you enjoy it. You are not reading because your teacher said, read this book. You are not reading because you think, I should read this book. You are reading because you want to. Back in 1966, something super interesting happened in American schools. There were these special schools for boys who made some not-so-great choices, like taking things that weren't theirs. But then, a brilliant idea popped up. They decided to give some of these boys free books. And guess what? These weren't just any books. They were the exciting kind, like James Bond adventures. Now, here's the plot twist. The grown-up said, You do you. No need to read these books if you don't want to. But guess what those boys did? Yep, they read those books like there was no tomorrow. Some even finished a whole book every two days. Fast forward two years and magic happened. They tested the students. The ones who got those cool books became reading and writing superheroes and even started liking school more. How cool is that? Students who did not receive books did not improve their reading and writing skills. Actually, some of them worsened. This isn't just true for native speakers. They also did an experiment on students learning English in the Fiji Islands. They used three ways to teach. The first way was normal English teaching. Let's rewind to the English class adventure. So, there were three ways to tackle the language puzzle. First, the classic route. Grammar classes, exercises, and all that jazz. Then, we had the second way, a silent reading party. Picture this. Students diving into books, silently exploring English wonders. And the third way, a reading fiesta together. The teacher transformed into a storytelling maestro, reading tales to the eager audience. Now, fast forward one year, and guess what? The reading buddies stole the spotlight. They aced the language game, leaving the grammar class crew in the dust. The story doesn't end there. They repeated the magical experiment in the land of Singapore. 
And oh boy, the silent readers rocked the grammar tests, claiming the crown for the best performance. Meanwhile, the grammar class heroes? Well, not their shining moment. Reading for the win. In regular classes, we attempt to remember grammar and vocabulary. We naturally learn things while reading. Perhaps you're thinking, when I read in English, it's too difficult. I have to use the dictionary all of the time. It is boring. I can't do it. I understand. So I wrote this book. I believe this book will make you enjoy reading because the stories are simple and entertaining. The early stories are short and easy, whereas the later ones are more challenging. After finishing the book, you will think, wow, I did it. Now you can read the stories at beginner, pre-intermediate, intermediate, or advanced levels. The stories are all fairy tales. Some are very popular fairy tales, but some are not so popular. If you're on the lookout for more fantastic content like this, head over to my YouTube channel, dive into the playlists, or explore the variety of videos, and you're bound to stumble upon a treasure trove of similar gems. Whether you're into educational journeys, entertaining stories, or insightful discussions, there's something special waiting for you. Maybe you're thinking, fairy tales are for children. I need useful vocabulary. I need to learn about business and science. That can't be fun. Actually, the vocabulary in these stories will be helpful. McQuillan conducted an experiment analyzing vocabulary in 22 novels. 85% of the words were from academic word lists, lists of words required to study at the university. Rolls and Rogers also conducted an experiment. They asked if students read a million words of science fiction. Will they learn important science words for university? The answer was yes. So, yes, fairy tales can help you as well. But I understand if you still do not believe me. When I learned about all of this, I found it difficult to believe. But I enjoy trying new things and learning languages. So in 2017, I decided to do an experiment. I had wanted to learn French for a long time, but I didn't learn much in normal classes. I said I would read a million words in French. Afterwards, I will see what my level is. A million words is about 20 novels, so it was a lot of work. I started with very easy reading, like this book. Then I started reading translations of books that I knew in English. For example, I have read Harry Potter and Game of Thrones in English. So I read them in Spanish, too. Finally, I read new books in French. I read Latin American authors. That means writers such as Isabel Allende, Luis Jorge Borges, and Manuel Puig. I love them. I also listen to podcasts, but I always read the transcripts and added the words to my goal. After I finished reading a million words, I wrote and communicated with native speakers. I was at the intermediate level. I could understand almost everything I read, hear people when they spoke clearly, and hold conversations. And I'd spent most of my time reading instead of speaking. In one year, I learned more than most students would in five years. I did not try to remember grammar or vocabulary. I learned them naturally. Maybe you're thinking, I don't believe this, or confused. I am going to read for hours every day. But I have to say something very important. You must read books that are easy. You must read books that are fun. If a book is too difficult or too boring, put it down and find another one. Stephen Krashen, an expert in language teaching, says only read things in English that are fun and interesting, or read things that are really easy that you wouldn't read in your native language, because they are too easy. So you can read comics, magazines, detective stories, romance stories, 
and so on. Don't feel bad about reading translations. If you read very easy books, when you see a word you don't know, you will understand the meaning easily. You won't have to use a dictionary. So what is easy? Experiments show that you should understand at least 98% of the words in a text. 98%, that's so high. I know, but let me show you an example. Here is a text where 10% of the words are not real words. So you should understand 90% of the words. Jerry threw back his covers and jumped out of bed. While preparing breakfast, he gave himself a bump. He poured butter on his puffer and made coffee. He took up his phone when someone called. His visi fell on the ground as he was taken aback by the person who was teasing him. Is that simple to comprehend? Could you read that as an entire book? This passage has the same meaning, but just 2% of the words are fake. Therefore, you ought to comprehend 98% of the text. Jerry jumped out of bed and opened the curtains. He's saying to himself as he makes breakfast. He made coffee and put butter on his toast. Someone called his phone and he picked it up. He was very surprised by who was calling, so his vinky fell on the floor. How is that? You probably didn't understand everything, but it was more fun to read than the first text. That's why reading for pleasure is so great. Maybe you don't understand everything, but you understand enough to follow the story and you don't have to pick up a dictionary. Read something simpler. If this book proves to be too difficult for you, read something more entertaining. If you find it boring, it's okay. Not everyone finds my writing to be appealing. Look for a book that will benefit you. We learn a lot more when we are having fun. There are no exercises in this book because I want it to be enjoyable. Although I considered including these after every story, I don't think it would be a worthwhile use of your time. You ought to read more, though. For enjoyment, read. You can attempt the level above once you finish this book since you've already read the stories. You'll be familiar with them and find them easier to understand. But maybe when you finish this book, you will love stories. I hope so. If you do want to read more, you can browse my YouTube channel. I write a new story every week with audio and text, and there are over 100 episodes for you to listen to. Happy reading and happy learning. I hope you enjoyed the beginner level version. Now I'll just explain some words that are in the intermediate level text. Proficiency means skill. Usually, we use the word proficiency to talk about language skills. If you have a high level of proficiency in English, it means you can talk and write English very well. When you train your ear, you try to make your ear better at hearing different sounds. Usually, there are two ways you can train your ear. You can train your ear for music so that you can hear the difference between different musical notes better. Or you can train your ear for language so that you can listen better in that language. A young person who has committed crimes, a juvenile delinquent, is a juvenile delinquent. Since juvenile offenders are not adults, they are not sent to prison. Rather, they are sent to juvenile delinquent reform centers which are facilities designed to assist in the rehabilitation and reformation of young individuals. Replicating a study involves taking an existing academic study and conducting it again, but in a different setting. The goal is to reproduce the study while maintaining identical settings to see if the outcomes are the same. A study can be considered scientifically proven or disproven if it is repeated numerous times and yields the same results. When you memorize something, you make yourself remember it. There are many ways to memorize things. One way is to repeat it, to say it many times to yourself. Another way is to think of an image, 
a picture that goes with it. To be honest, people often try to memorize words when they learn a language. But this is a very bad way of learning words, as you will forget them within a few months. Second language acquisition is the scientific study of how we learn languages. Second languages are languages that are not your native language or your first language. Acquisition means acquiring and learning. The field of second language acquisition has lots of important research for language teachers like me. Saying something like, there's no shame in doing it, implies that you shouldn't feel guilty or ashamed about doing it. For instance, a lot of individuals are afraid of making mistakes when speaking a language. Although mistakes are not a source of shame, it is normal to make mistakes when learning a language. Thus, we shouldn't feel bad about it. Something is easily understandable when it is intelligible. When I teach, I put a lot of effort into making sure that the kids can understand me and that I am intelligible to them. I hope this edition of the show makes sense to you. Don't sweat. It means don't worry about it. For example, if one of my students says, I'm really sorry, sir. I tried really hard to complete my homework by today, but I ran out of time. Can I have more time to do it? I would say, don't sweat it. Take as long as you need. When you contradict something, you say the opposite of it. You say something against it. Let's chat about something we all do, saying one thing and doing another. Imagine telling your kids, don't smoke, and then sneaking out for a quick cigarette. That's what we call contradiction. Yep, humans are experts at it. Now, here's a cool trick to polish your language skills. The shadow technique. The secret sauce? Talk and read a bunch and you'll become a language superstar. So talk and read like there's no tomorrow. Practice is the key. And hey, if you enjoyed this video, spread the love. Give it a thumbs up, share it with your pals, and hit that subscribe button. Let's keep the good vibes going.